uh, it summarizes by saying they could not enter in because of unbelief. And so I just pray as we uh, study the Word of God that God would build our faith up so that we can all enter into the promises of God, Amen. enter into His rest by faith, and believe God for everything that Jesus Christ paid for us to have when He uh, shed His blood, life blood on the cross at Calvary that was paid for by His death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. So with that in mind, turn with me now to Numbers chapter 13, and I'm going to read some selected verses in the interest of time. But beginning in verse 1 of Numbers 13, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am given to the children of Israel, and each tribe of their fathers you shall send a man, every one a leader among them. Verse 3, So Moses sent them from the wilderness of Paran according to the command of the Lord of all them, men who were heads of the children of Israel. Then skipping on down to verse 17, you know, they list the men that were sent. Verse 17, Then Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said to them, Go up the way into the south and go up into the uh, mountains and see what the land is like, whether the people who dwell in it are strong or weak, few or many whether the land they dwell in is good or bad, whether the cities they inhabit are like camps or strongholds. Skipping to verse 23, Then they came to the valley of Eshkel, and there cut down a branch with one cluster of grapes. They carried it between the two of them on a pole. They also brought some of the pomegranates and figs. You know, that was a big cluster of grapes if it took two men to carry them on a pole. I mean, we go to the grocery store and buy a cluster of grapes and you put in a little plastic sack and you know get, throw it in the thing so that was that was uh, bountiful fruit wasn't it verse 25 and they returned from spying out the land after 40 days now they departed and came back to Moses and Aaron and all the congregation of the children of Israel in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh they brought back word to them to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land then they told him and said we went to the land where you sent us it truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we, saw, we saw the descendants of Anak there. They were referring to the giants. Verse 30, Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. And that's the title of this message is we are well able. You know, I appreciate, we're, and we're going to read some more verses, but we need to have the kind of confession that Caleb had. We need to say we are well able. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Well, let's uh, go to verse uh, 31. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendant of Anak uh, uh, came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. So all the congregation lifted up their voices, and this is uh, chapter 14, verse 1, lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron and the whole congregation and said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in the wilderness, why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? Verse 4, So they said to one another, Let us select a leader and return to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes. And they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then He will 
bring us into this land and give it to us, a land that flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed uh, from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Amen. If God is for you, who can be against you? Verse in Romans 8 says. Verse 10, And all the congregation <coughs> said to stone them with stones. Now the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of meeting before all the children of Israel. Then Moses, then the Lord said to Moses, How long will these people reject me? And how long will they not believe me with all the signs which I have performed among them? I will strike them with the pestilence. You know, think of the signs they had seen when he delivered them from Egypt and all the great miracles they had already seen God do. You know, we need to remember his miracles and his signs and the wonders we've seen him do in our lifetimes. We need to, we need to build those kind of memorials in granite. We need to, we need to, uh, the memorials to our failures, we need to, uh, but it needs to be in the sand where the wind of the Holy Spirit can just blow it away. Amen. He said, verse 12, I will strike them with the pestilence and disinherit them, and I will make of you a nation greater and mightier than they. And Moses <coughs> said to the Lord, then the Egyptians will hear it. For by your might you brought these people up from among them. Verse 20, then, skipping down to verse 20, Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word. <clears throat> but truly, as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness have put me to the test now these ten times and have not heeded my voice. They certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. <clears throat> but my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit in him and has followed me fully, <clears throat> I will bring into the land where he went, and the descendants shall inherit it. Verse 27, How long shall I bear with this evil generation, or congregation that is, who complain against me, I have heard the complaints which the children of Israel make against me. Skipping to verse 29, The carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in the wilderness. All of you who were numbered according to your entire number from 20 years old and above, except for Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun, you shall by no means enter the land which I swore I would make you dwell in. Verse 33, And your sons shall be shepherds in the wilderness forty years and bear the brunt of your infidelity until your carcasses are consumed in the wilderness. Verse 34, According to the number of the days in which you spied out the land, forty days, for each day you shall bear your guilt one year, namely forty years, and you shall know my rejection. I, the Lord, have spoken this. I will surely do so to all this evil congregation who are gathered together against me. In this wilderness they shall be consumed, and there they shall die. Now the men from whom Moses sent to spy out the land who returned and made all the congregation complain against him by bringing a bad report of the land, those very men who brought the evil report about the land died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh remained alive of the men who went to spy out the land. Sure, would you hand me that bottle of water there? So I just, I know I read a lot of verses to you, but I just wanted you to hear the story. I skipped some in the interest of time. But the, the importance of, of how we uh, look at things. You know uh, how we view things. We need, to, uh, we need to look at things through the eyes of God. And we need to be careful what we say with our mouths. So There's some people, they say, well, you know, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's one of the biggest lies the devil ever put on humanity. Words hurt people. Words can hurt worse than sticks and stones. You know, words can cause people to die. Did you know that? Words we speak can cause the deaths of innocent people. 
I'll, I'll give you a, a proof of that. Uh, for example, Charles Manson is in prison for the murder of uh, innocent families in California, yet he never went there himself. He was not on the murder scenes. He talked the others there in his uh, cult, if you will. He talked them into going and killing those innocent people. But the law recognized that it was because of the words of Charles Manson planted in those others that he had mesmerized and so forth that caused them to go and murder those innocent uh, families. Therefore, he was convicted of murder, even though he did not, with his own hand, kill any of those people. Our words can be very destructive. The Bible says death and life is in the power of the tongue. Words cause actions. So we need to be sure that we speak according to the Word of God and that we give God's report rather than the devil's report or rather than unbelieving man's report. Whose report will we believe? We will re believe the report of the Lord. We need to be like Joshua and Caleb. We need to know what God's Word says. We need to look at the world through His eyes. Amen? We need to be of good courage. We need to know about the enemy and we need to know his tactics. That's the reason Moses sent the spies in. We need to know his strengths and his weaknesses, but especially we need to know about our enemy that he is already defeated. We, we, have a, we are appropriating a victory that has already been achieved over him by the works of Jesus on the cross at Calvary. The Bible says that he triumphed over Satan and demonic powers in it, in it, in his works on the cross and in his resurrection. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Think about the fruit. You know, we need to think about the fruit that God has for us. Amen. Think about the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, uh, uh, self-control against such there is no law. God's given us a, a wonderful fruit that we can have in our lives if we'll only accept and believe by faith. Amen. The, uh, look, at, look back in chapter 13, verse 33. The, the, the ten spies, the ten uh, spies that gave the bad report, they said, there we saw the giants the descendant of Anak came from the giants and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight and so we were in their sight. So the ten spies that brought back the bad or evil report, they had a grasshopper vision, didn't they? You know, they, they, it said they saw themselves as grasshoppers. You know, in, uh, so we need to realize that it's who we are in God's sight that's important. Amen? Somebody get excited about this. Let me read verse 14, 8 again. Uh, this is Joshua and, and uh, Caleb speaking. And, he, and it says, If the Lord delights in us, then He will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. That's the kind of report uh, we need to believe. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And... and and uh, see the world through his eyes. Amen. Uh, we need to realize who we, are, who we are in God's sight that's important. We must know that God delights in us. If, if, we're, if we're going to take the land, you got to know God loves me. Say that. God loves me. Say that. God delights in me. Amen. We have to believe that if we're going to achieve what God wants us to achieve while we're on this earth. Joshua and Caleb, they had a different vision. They saw themselves in the eyes of God rather than in the eyes of the enemy. Joshua and Caleb saw through the eyes of faith. We need to look through the eyes of faith. We walk by faith and not by sight, the Bible says. Amen. The, the, other, the other ten were looking through the eyes of doubt and unbelief. And how often the enemy, he knows that if he can get us over into the flesh, 
into doubt and unbelief, thinking that the only way we're ever going to get victory is through the flesh, through our uh, own efforts, and, uh, not, but not through calling on God and His power, then He knows He's got us defeated. We need to always have our eyes first and foremost on Almighty God, who is all-powerful, and know that He lives in us, He is working through us, and He wants to use us as His vessels and instruments on this earth today. Can you say amen? They brought a good report. They said, we are well able. Well able. That's what we need to say. Say this with me. We are well able. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now let's talk about vision for a while here. Vision is being able to see through the eyes of faith. Vision by faith is being able to see things which don't yet exist physically. You know, the... Uh, the Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 10, verse uh, 1. And it says, by faith, uh, we know the things which are seen were not made by things which are visible. And so uh, we have to see through the eyes of faith. Vision by faith is being able to see things which don't yet exist physically. The ten spies saw the giants and the fortified cities. They could, they could not see victory. All they could see were the giants and the fortified cities. They could not see that God delighted in them and that He had already given them the land to take. He had already planned for them to take the land. Amen. The ten spies saw through the eyes of fear. And fear is a force that opposes faith. If a person's being motivated by fear, the first thing they need to do is stop and say, wait a minute. Uh, whatever we do, we're not going to be motivated by fear. We're going to be motivated by faith. Amen. The Bible says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1.7. So as we go through this life, there are things, you know, the enemy tries to intimidate. He tries to make the believer afraid. But when we experience that, we need to stop and say, wait a minute, this is not what's going to dictate my actions. What's going to dictate my actions is faith in an all-powerful and almighty God. Then we need to be careful what we say with our mouths. Death and life, again, is in the power of the tongue. Uh, Win Winifred Newman said, vision is the world's most desperate need there are no hopeless situations, only people who think hopelessly. Vision's all about perspective. I, uh, a man came to a construction site where stonemasons were working, and the man said to one, what are you doing? The stonemason answered, well, you can see, I I'm chipping a stone. The man walked over to another stonemason and said, what are you doing? He said, I'm building a wall. The man walked over to a third stonemason and said, what are you doing? The stonemason answered, I am building a cathedral. <laughs> you know, all three were doing the same thing, but what a difference perspective makes. How many of you know which one had the spirit of excellence in what he was doing? It's the one that had the correct vision. You know, he didn't see what he was doing as menial and unimportant. Uh, he, was, he was working away on that stone because he was building a cathedral. We need to see through the eyes of God. He's got uh, important things. You know, every part of the body of Christ is important. And we all fit together. Amen. Uh, you know, it's, it's seriously, it's, it's, all, it's, it's all about... Uh, him and seeing through his eyes. Uh, when contact lenses uh, were still a novelty, you remember when, con well, some of you don't, don't, but the older ones remember when contact lenses were still a novelty and they were first coming out. And uh, this uh, one woman was pulled over by the police. And uh, checking the motorist license, the policeman noted, uh, it says you're required to wear glasses. And there was some confusion about this, you know, when contact lenses first came out. And uh, she said, uh, I have contacts. And the policeman said, I don't care who you know. He said, you have to wear glasses. But, 
But, but seriously, seriously, it is all about who we know. He delights in us. We're children of Almighty God. He dwells in us. Know you not you are the temple of the Holy Ghost? Amen. God is with you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, I read an account of a coach, uh, Jimmy Johnson. You know, he was a coach for the Dallas Cowboys one of the years where they won the Super Bowl in 1993. And uh, he, uh, before leading them out onto the field, he, he was asked what he told his players, and he said, I told them uh, that if I laid a two-by-four across the floor, everybody there would walk across it and not fall. They could walk across that two-by-four. He said, because our focus would be on walking the length of that board. But he said, he told them, but if I put that same board ten stories high between two buildings, only a few would make it because the focus would be on falling. And Johnson uh, told his players to, not to focus on the crowd, the media, or the possibility of falling, but to focus on each play of the game as if it were a good practice session. And the Cowboys won that game, won the Super Bowl 52-7. Uh, to 7. And you know, that's what we have to do as believers. We have to focus on God. Uh, in Philippians chapter 4, if I can remember it, it, it says... Uh, uh, you know, it says, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication, make your request be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our, our Lord. And it, he says, in, he says in uh, whatever things are true, or whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, if there is any uh, thing praiseworthy, meditate on these things. And that's what we have to do as believers. We need to uh, look at God's report. Look at what the Word of God says about us as children of God. We need to put our trust in God, focus our attention on the author and finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ. But, but what about the giants? You're well able to bind them and defeat them. You've been given the use of the name of Jesus to bind principalities and powers, to cast them out in Jesus' name. Find the place in the Word, you know, regarding your situation, and uh, exercise your faith. Walk by faith and not by sight. Walk in the Spirit. We need to learn to see ourselves in the Word of God, not who the devil says we are, but see what God's Word says about about us. Amen. It's like the way you hold a baby in uh, uh, the, uh, the front of a mirror and the, the, the baby for the face lights up. The little baby does because for the, the first time it's in front of a mirror and he realizes for the first time that he's seeing himself. And the little baby's face just lights up because he's seeing himself in the mirror for the first time. We need to find a reflection of ourselves in the scriptures. I've, 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 when, when I see, read the Word of God, I don't see Tom Battle as an alcoholic anymore or a drug addict. I see myself uh, according to uh, the, the Gospel of uh, John, uh, uh, chapter 8, where it's uh, 7, that is, it says that, uh, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And if the Son has set you free, you are free indeed. I see myself... Uh, as a reflection of 2 Corinthians 5, 17 that says that if anyone is in Christ, uh, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We need to learn to see ourselves in new creation realities. We need to see ourselves uh, as a reflection of God's Word. Amen. Instead of believing the report of the world or the, or the report of the devil. You know, he'll tell you you're defeated. You'll never make it. You'll never be successful at anything that you're doomed for failure. That's the way Satan talks to people. But God will say you're more than conquerors through him who loves you. Amen. He'll say you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Hallelujah. 
And so we realize that it's not by the flesh that we get victory. It's through allowing His Spirit to work through us and seeing ourselves the way uh, God sees us. Uh, Charles uh, Spurgeon, he, he said this uh, in, in a message. He said, how many of you ever heard of Charles Spurgeon? He was one of the greatest preachers of the uh, 1900s. He was a preacher in England. He said a heavy wagon was being dragged along a country lane by a team of oxen. The axles groaned and creaked terribly. When the oxen, uh, turning around, thus addressed the wheels, Hey there, why do you make so much noise? We bear all the labor. We, not you, ought to cry out. And he, he, Charles Spurgeon went on to say, Those complain first who have the least to do. He said, The gift of grumbling is largely dispensed among those who have no other talents or who keep what they have wrapped in a napkin. Amen. <laughs> you know, we, we need to just thank God that He's given us something to do and uh, let His power work through us rather than getting into that grumbling and complaining uh, grasshopper mentality that the ten spies had. You know, they quickly began to grumble at Moses and complain uh, about their leadership. One of the tactics of the devil, uh, another tactic of the devil is to get Christians stalled long enough for them to miss God's window of opportunity. Look at uh, uh, chapter 13, verse 30. Caleb said, he said he quieted the people before Moses said, let us go up at once and take possession for we're well able. You know, the enemy just, he knows if he can just stall you long enough, he can keep you. Uh, sometimes from uh, going in. Only Joshua and Caleb uh, uh, went in eventually. The others died in the wilderness. Yeah, sure, they're giants, you know, but, but let's go in. We're well able. Hallelujah. You know, may, maybe a, there's someone here watching by internet, maybe you've been fighting addiction. Maybe the enemy's been telling you you'll never be able to get free from that addiction. It could be a chemical addiction, sexual addiction. There are all kinds of a gambling addiction. There's all kinds of addictions. And they're all uh, powered by the devil. But you know what? Uh, it's, 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 no matter how long you've been postponing it, if you'll just say, hey, I'm well able with God's help. I can be free in Jesus' name. You can get free. Ad addictions most of the time involve demonic spirits to get a stronghold on people's lives. We have authority over them. We just have to come to that place of decision where we decide, uh-uh, this thing's not going to dominate my life anymore. This addiction is not my God. God is God. Amen. Amen. The God of the Bible is my God. And we have to stand up in faith and know that if, if we will start with our mouths and say the right words, God will supply the right power to deliver us and set us free. We can go in. Yes. The biggest enemy those ten spies had was their lip, their mouths, their tongues were the biggest enemy they had. Joshua and Caleb spoke words of victory, words of faith. Uh, the Bible says in uh, Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I'm not the number one preacher in your life, neither is your favorite televangelist or whoever, whatever teacher uh, you might follow. You are the number one teacher you have as far as you cannot, put it this way, you cannot escape your own words. You hear every word you say with your mouth during your lifetime. And if we go around speaking negative words, doubt and unbelief and death over our situations and all, that's what gets down in our hearts. I was asked the Holy Spirit, I was reading that verse one time, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I said, Lord, why is that word hearing in there twice? Others may have different opinions, but I'll tell you what the Holy Spirit told me. He said, the first time you hear it, it's going in. The second time you hear it, it's coming out over your own lips, over your own tongue. Amen. We need to hear it going in and we need to speak forth, speak it forth into our lives and those around us. Come on now. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching the truth to you this morning. Somebody get excited in here. Hallelujah. Am I the only person excited about this? Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God. Maybe it's sickness. Maybe you've been fighting sickness all your life. 
and been to the best doctors and, and, and everything. We're not against going to doctors. Do what you can in the natural while you're believing God for the supernatural. But sometimes the best thing we do is just stand up and just shake ourselves and say, wait a minute. I, I'm not going to let this infirmity have a grip on my life anymore. I'm tired of being sick. I rebuke this thing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Jesus, he took those stripes and carried them to the cross for me. Personalize it. See yourself as a reflection in the word of God. and Personalize it. Jesus took those stripes for me and carried them to the cross. I declare in the name of Jesus, I'm whole. I'm well. I'm walking in divine healing and health. Amen. We got to preach to ourselves if we want to get the victory. Amen. It's up to us. We can walk in doubt and unbelief and defeat or we can walk in victory by faith. Amen. Perhaps it's uh, lack and uh, never having enough. It's, it may, it's, it's time to get in God's Word. Find the place in the Word of God. Uh, verses like uh, that, that say, uh, whatever a man sows that he will also reap. And say, so, well, I just don't have much. Well, take what you have and wherever your faith will take you to and say, listen, instead of complaining about lack, I'm going to start sowing. I'm going to sow my way out of this. I'm going to start giving. I'm going to be a tither. I'm going to give in missions. I'm going to help the needy. I'm going to help uh, all, wherever I can find somebody to help and God leads me. I'm going to help. Amen. And, and decide, you know, find the place where it's written. See yourself as a reflection uh, in the Word of God and say, okay, I'm tired of lack. I'm going to sow. I'm going to sow seed. Oh, yeah, I don't have much, but I'm going to take some of that and sow it into somebody else's life. And I'm telling you, God will begin to multiply. Hallelujah. Unforgiveness. Forgiveness starts with one's mouth. People, they're people that have been imprisoned all their lives in a prison of unforgiveness and they're, they're tied there by a root of bitterness and can't seem to get out. But I'm telling you, all a person has to do is take that rudder of the ship of their life, their tongue, and say, well, I don't feel like forgiving. Of course you don't. That's the reason you, 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 that's the reason you need to forgive. When you have unforgiveness, you don't feel like forgiving, but you have to start somewhere. We can start with our mouths and say, okay, I may not feel it inside, but I'm a saying it with my mouth. Amen. <laughs> I'm a saying it with my mouth. I forgive that person in Jesus' name. I forgive them. I give them a brand new beginning. I release them. I'm cutting this root of bitterness. I'm not going to allow it to keep me in this prison of unforgiveness any longer. I'm stepping out in Jesus' name. This, that, I'm not going to be held back anymore by that prison of unforgiveness. And you start speaking it with your mouth. And you know the next thing you know, you realize, hey, I don't feel those bad feelings toward that person anymore. Hallelujah. So we need to uh, go in. We can take the land that God has for us and possess it. Hallelujah. You know, um, let, let's go to Joshua chapter 14. I love this. Verse 6. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua. This is after they, you know, Joshua and Caleb survived and went into the promised land. At this point in time, Caleb, I believe, is 85 years old. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenesite, said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God concerning you and me and Kadesh Barnea? I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore that day saying, surely the land where your foot was trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. Verse 10, And now behold, the Lord has kept me alive. And he has said these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now here I am, this day, 85 years old. Verse 11, And I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. 
Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and coming in. Now, verse 12, now therefore, give me this mountain. Hallelujah. Give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim, you know, the giants were there and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me and I will be able to drive them out as the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, as an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenesite, to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. And the name of Hebron formerly was Akurjath Arba. Arba was the greatest among the Anakim. Then the land had rest from war. Well, I'm telling you, you know, you think of Caleb. He had the right attitude, he and Joshua. He wanted to go in back there 45 years earlier. He wanted to go in and take it then. But he, he, he uh, wasn't, he, they weren't allowed to go in because of the unbelief of the rest of them. And so he was delayed not by his unbelief, but by the unbelief of those around him. But I'm telling you, he kept the faith. He didn't give up. And even though it's 45 years later, he went and he took that mountain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just got to keep the faith, keep believing, not give up. Amen. Your best days are ahead of you. As pastor of this church, I declared over you, your best days are ahead of you. You are well able to go in and take the land. God, God will give you that mountain and he'll give you the power to take it. Amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Let's bow us for prayer. Father, we thank you for the word of God that does not return void. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we're ready to take, take that mountain. Amen. Praise God. I just want to ask with everyone with their eyes closed, heads bowed in an attitude of prayer and with a reverence for God. You might be watching this uh, broadcast uh, streaming live and maybe you haven't heard a message like this before. And you want, what is it? What are they? You know, it's, it's all about faith. Faith in God. Faith in His Son, Jesus. Faith in what Jesus did for us. He's already achieved the victory. And when you accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, the Apostle John said, from that point forward, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Greater is he who is in you than those giants that you come against in life. And uh, it starts, though, by turning one's life over to the Lord Jesus Christ and accepting him as one's personal Lord and Savior. If you haven't done that, I, I know he's knocking on the door of your heart. And uh, he's done the hard part. He went to the cross and suffered and died for our sins. And uh, it's because of his death, burial, and resurrection that we can have eternal life, forgiveness of our sins, and a new life here on this earth. He'll come and, and tabernacle and dwell in us if we'll invite him. And so he's done the hard part. All he requires of us is a choice, a decision. You know, sometimes people run away from God all their lives with their sins and they wonder why they can't ever get free. It's because we can't get free that way. We have to take them to the cross in repentance. We have to run toward God instead of away from Him. And if you're ready to do that, turn, make that turn to Jesus uh, and say, Lord, I repent and ask you to come into my heart. He'll do it. You just have to make the choice Choose him and extend the invitation to him. He's wanting, he's already knocking at the door. So if that's what you want to do, you want to invite him in, I want you to lift your hand up high. Then you can put it back down. You're saying, that's what I need to do. I want to invite Jesus into my heart. I want him to be my personal Lord and Savior. I want to accept him now. If you're watching by internet, God sees your hand wherever you are. Just lift it up as a, a, a sign to God that you're serious about getting in on this prayer. Then you can put it back down. Let's all stand to our feet. Let's say this prayer together. Even if you've been saved for many years to encourage those that may be uh, within the hearing of our voices that may be saying it for the first time. Let's say this to the internet audience. Say this with us. Heavenly Father, 
Have mercy on me, a sinner. I repent for all my sins and ask your forgiveness. Lord Jesus, I accept you now and forever as my personal Lord and Savior. I invite you into my heart. Take charge of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a hand clap. Glory to God. You may be excited. I mean, you may be seated. I am excited. <laughs> and you are too. <laughs> and you may be too. <laughs> sure, would you help me pray for people? And uh, let's invite Anita up here. She's been uh, uh, out of the country ministering, you know. I believe when people leave the country to minister and come back, they bring a powerful anointing with them. Hundredfold return. And uh, let's uh, pray for people up here. Sarah, would you like to help us pray for people? That, and Chris uh, Holloway, would you like to help us pray for people? And uh, if you have a prayer need, just come on up here to the front. We're going to believe God. Go in with you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Take the promised land. So what is the promise? All the promises of God. Hallelujah.
and answered all these prayers. And Judy was sharing with us that she and Anita agreed some months ago regarding Tom's foot and that it's been much better and that if infection has not come back. So, you know, we give God the glory. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. And I think of so many people that God has touched, uh, you know, uh, particularly with healing in this church. And uh, we, uh, we need to uh, use that as God's calling card, that God heals the sick today. And uh, you know a, a church where they'll pray for the sick and believe God. Amen. We give Him all the glory, don't we? Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet. I want to remind you we're having a prayer service tonight at 6, every Sunday at 6 p.m., and uh, please try to come to some of these prayer services if you can and pray with us. It's so important in these uh, days that we're living in that we have more time come together and uh, pray. And uh, also we're going to be <coughs> in the future and uh, we'll be announcing more about this, but we're well, along with 30 other churches in this area, we're going to be part of a 24-7 prayer vigil. And uh, our church will be taking a day. And so I'm believing that we can, we'll can. we have 24 volunteers in here. We, we'll, uh, we don't know what day of the month our day is going to be, but there'll be one day each month. And you know, there'll be 30 churches in this area. Each church will have a day. And we'll need 24 people to agree to take an hour <coughs> that day and pray. And we'll have a, a, of course, you be led by the Spirit, but also we'll have some prayer agenda for you, you know, where we can be praying in agreement with these other churches. And I'm excited about that, you know. Uh, KSBJ Radio is a station is involved in this 24-7 uh, prayer project. We plan to uh, kind of, we'll, well, we hope to have it underway completely by January of next year, but I think we're probably going to get started on it uh, sometime in November. So be thinking about that, you know. Uh, maybe you take 2 a.m. in the morning. You get up and pray from 2 to 3. God will bless you. But, uh, or maybe you'll have a 11 to 12. But uh, <laughs> How many of you are excited about that, think you'd like to take an hour? You'd be, I, let me just see your hands. I'm just curious. We're gonna, I see a few of you, and some of you are thinking about it, I believe. But I believe I saw about maybe eight hands up. So uh, anyway, we're excited about that. God bless you. Uh, don't forget, prayer tonight at 6 o'clock. Go out and win the world for Jesus. We love you.